Hello and welcome to the War 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Baz Dan for sending in some awesome pictures of his Sector Mechanicus terrain. It looks really, really good. I think that sometimes as players, as 40k, we can be a little bit too concentrated on our models and then we have these beautiful models but then these relatively unpainted and crappy terrain setups. So it's really nice to see a player making the effort to put some love and care and attention into the battlefield because that really ties it all together. I've seen basement battle reports, I've seen tournaments run with rubbish terrain and beautiful armies and it always it always it's always a shame so it's really good to see some properly painted up terrain and a really nice cinematic board so thank you for sending these pictures in if anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos please post them on my facebook page or you can email them to me at mordiangloryTV at gmail.com and don't worry if you can't remember that because it will be down in the description below and so will a link to the facebook page but without further ado let's get into today's video now often on this channel we will review a specific tactic or a specific unit and talk about how it can be used on the battlefield in a certain way. But today I want to zoom out a little bit, look at a broader topic and actually cover this as more of a beginner mistakes, golden rule kind of video because I've done this in the past and they've been very popular and they've had a good, good viewership but also they've received really positive feedback and I've had a lot of people say I really didn't realize I was making this mistake until someone pointed out or I'm a new player and this kind of video has been super helpful. It's really helped me turn my games around and get a couple of wins under my belt. So I want to do another one of those videos. And today guys, I want to talk about one of the misconceptions and easiest pitfalls that a new player can fall into when they are getting started into the Imperial Guard. Now this might be a newer player who's getting into 40k for the first time or it could be a player who is switching over from another army and who is might be experienced at Warhammer but maybe hasn't quite got all the idiosyncrasies of the guard sorted out. And today's golden rule, today's biggest mistake that I see newer players making is don't gunline. I cannot tell you the number of times I have seen a guard player sitting back, not moving any of his models in his deployment zone, maybe if we're lucky, just out of his deployment zone, blasting away at the enemy. And he's having a great time. He's rolling dice, the enemy is dying, it all seems to be going well, and then it gets to the end of the game, and the guard player has been absolutely smashed. This is something that I have seen from addition to addition to addition and there's very few circumstances when that tactic works but i see people doing it time and time again and it's not only with guard armies it's there are other armies as well but it is with the imperial guard it's because we are primarily seen as a shooting army and i've seen this especially so in eighth and ninth edition i won't name any names but i have seen some of the top YouTubers out there, battle reporters out there who have Imperial Guard armies literally never leave their deployment zone. These people are really, really good players, but the moment they get their hand on the guard, they don't like moving out of the deployment zone. And I think it is a really, really critical flaw because especially in 9th edition, it was prevalent in 8th edition, but especially in 9th edition, if you do that, you are just going to lose games. Now, why do players do this? It's always important to understand why people do it. Firstly, as we mentioned, Imperial Guard are a shooting faction and often that means you don't need to move to get into range to damage the enemy. I mean, our standard, our essentially, our essentially a minimum effective range is 24 inches. That is some army's maximum effective range. Nearly every single one of our heavy weapons has a 36 inch range or greater. If you look at it on paper, the Guard are a classic long-range bombardment faction. But if you follow that rule, if you try doing that, you will lose, well, nearly every game. I'm sure you'll win some, but by and large, you will lose every single game. So that, that is, we've sort of analysed why players do it. Another reason is that, this is more of a specific 8th and 9th edition thing, is that Guard are often seen as a tank heavy faction. Now I have railed against this for God knows how many years. You guys know I'm an infantry player through and through. And so, I, look, I'm, I can be biased, but I also, before I was an infantry player, I was a tank commander. I had 
dozens and dozens of tanks. Still have them. And I have a full Steel Legion army. In fact, the army that I've taken to tournaments the most over 8th and 9th edition has been my Steel Legion. That's because I've been reworking on my uh, Mordians because they were in a terrible state. And that's the Great Mordian Restoration Project. But because Guard are often seen as a tank heavy faction, because most of our firepower comes from tanks, and because tanks can be locked up in combat, it often causes Imperial Guard players to be very hesitant to be aggressive with their vehicles. Now there are exceptions, Double Flame, Heavy Chimeras, Heavy Flame of Sentinels, Hellhounds, there are Demolisher Cannons, there are exceptions. But by and large, you see people being very nervous with their vehicles. They don't want to be running forward with the vehicles. They don't want to be um, getting those vehicles stuck into combat because if they're in combat, they can't fire. And that's not a, that's, that is a logical decision for someone to make. I'm not advocating that you suddenly start slamming every vehicle you've got into combat because that is going too far the other way. Absolutely. But it is a problem when this army is seen as a tank army, but then tanks can be so easily countered. A single Gretchen in 8th edition could get into combat with your tank and it it just it, that was it, it was locked down and even nowadays if, a, if a, a unit of five or six or ten Gretchen get into combat with your vehicle it's still effectively locked up and that 50 point unit has locked up your 150 to 200 point you know Lehman Russell Lehman Russell tank commander so that's kind of a problem and that is why I bang on about infantry so much because the way you are going to fix this problem is to have enough infantry and to have enough aggressive elements in your army now aggressive i don't mean go up to your opponent and like shout in his face pick up his hammerhead throw it against the wall well if it is a tower player maybe do that no no i'm joking guys don't do that you know i'm not mean i'm not meaning aggressive in that way i mean aggressive as in units that naturally lend themselves to going on the attack and not sitting back and shooting on paper, you can see a lot of guard armies that look really powerful. They've got all Lehman Russes, they've got Manticores, a full payload, they've got everything they need. They've got more firepower than they know what to do with. But then you get them on the tabletop and they start losing. And that's because they have all the firepower and none of the aggression, of the attacking, of the offensive units, the ones that can push forward. And that is why you may see a lot of guard players, competitive players, banging on about Bulgrins. Because Bulgrins are a very cost-effective, aggressive attacking unit that is why they are so key you see a lot of people go on forums say oh i'm looking into a pill guard uh, people say that bulgrins are really good but i don't really understand why and people just say just buy bulgrins or someone says buy bulgrins they're good at combat and they don't really explain why that's so important it's so important because you have to take ground in 40k you have to push forward and this was true in every edition but it is especially true in 9th edition because you have to be able to push forward because you need to take primary objectives. And you will only take primary objectives if you have combat capability. Okay, I have said this time and time again, but I'm going to repeat it again for the, for, for the sake of just getting that point across. If you shoot someone off an objective, all you have done is remove the enemy from that objective. If you charge someone and kill them in close combat and remove them from that objective with your own unit in combat, you have done the double doozy. You have pulled out the Uno reverse card because not only have you taken that objective off the enemy, but now you have a unit on that objective. You have done the old switcheroo. And that is why having a sufficient amount of aggressive units, which happen to be, tend to be infantry based rather than vehicle based. You do have Hellhounds, of course. You do have double heavy flame of chimeras, of course. But by and large, the units that you will find doing this job best are Bulgrins and, and <laughs> infantry squads. Okay, now you might say infantry squads getting into combat. Madness, not madness. Infantry squads can do okay in combat. They should not, ideally they don't want to be there. But if you're going to be pushing forward... An infantry squad can give someone a decent amount of firepower and then you can charge them in. And if you have something like priests, if you have a, if you have things like power swords, they can be expensive. But if it's the only upgrade you take on the squad, it's not a bad idea. And um, priests giving everyone extra attacks. If you've got Katachan giving everyone, uh, Strachan giving everyone extra attacks. If you have gone for uh, the Slum Lords custom doctrine, which is Slum Fighters and Lords Approval, the two custom traits, then you will find that you don't need to be afraid of getting your infantry into combat. Now, this does not mean, again, I always have to sort of want to go through every step here. This does not mean you go full meme mode. Oh, you know 
Krieg, happy gas mask noise, all that kind of thing. I mean, that's fine, but do not bayonet charge for the sake of bayonet charging. As with everything, timing is important and reading the situation is important. Now, I'm not going to get into over, over, uh, over, uh, over in depth analysis of that now. I'm just saying, like, don't you don't have to bayonet charge everything, but don't be afraid. If there's a single squad of five intercessors on an objective and you have a couple of infantry squads with a priest nearby, do not be afraid to get them stuck in. The intercessors, you may lose that combat to those intercessors, but it will take them two or three rounds of combat to grind through your guardsmen. And you, you more than likely will take some of them down with you. And whilst you're doing that, you have more obsec bodies on that objective than they do. You can wrap and trap those intercessors. They can't escape. Now, they could escape if they want to use something like um, Desperate Breakout, but then you're forcing the enemy to spend CP. And this is all being done. You are achieving this. You are putting pressure on the enemy. You are fighting for objectives. You are being aggressive and you are achieving all of this by not sitting back and shooting, but instead having a sufficient amount of units in your list that allows you to push forward onto objectives, play the addition, play the meta, and play the game. And that is why it's very important. When I'm when I have, if you ever watch any of my videos, you will hear me bang on and on about bringing enough infantry, okay? And you see a lot of people in competitive forums say, you can get away with 60 to 80 infantry to screen your units. That's what you. That's what everyone talks about. All you need to do is screen and your tanks will do the damage for you. No. If you only bring enough infantry to screen your firepower, you are only bringing half as much infantry or Bulgrins or aggressive units. I'm just using infantry as an example. But you're only bringing half the amount of aggressive infantry units that you need because you will need to screen, but you will also need to attack. And if you are going on the offensive with infantry and with Bulgrins and whatnot, you are going to take casualties because you are putting yourself and you are directly challenging the enemy. You're putting yourself in front of them. So that is the golden rule. And I hope that I have worked through it logically and made sense and everything. But the golden rule, guys, is do not gunline. Push forward you need fire support units absolutely but the guard is not just a gunline army leave that to the suckers in the tau empire okay leave that to those bozos right look at the imperial guard look at the unit entries look at the diverse range of units we have we have everything from psychers through to ab humans through to super heavy tanks read your codex absorb the whole thing the whole feel of your faction why does games workshop talk about waves of infantry followed up by loads of tanks and thundering artillery barges they are not telling you that because they're not saying that just because they you know because it's it's cool and fluffy it is but there is a hidden message in there okay which is the guard is a combined arms force if you only go all firepower you will fail if you only go all combat you will fail you need to have that balance and so you know that's 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 the lesson that's the golden rule if you're a new player getting into this buying those dark collecting sets buying those those boxes just make sure that when you're building your units you're like okay i've got my lean rush demolisher i've got my manticore but i only you know i, I only have like two three infantry squads that's not enough i need more do I have anything in my army that will allow me to operate in every phase of the game? Well, that gives me options, that gives me tactical flexibility. Because the guard is a multi-faceted thing. And if you go for an all-tank army, that's absolutely fine. But have you got enough Hellhounds? Have you got enough double heavy flame of Chimeras? Do you have enough uh, heavy flame of Sentinels to be doing this job? If you're going pure infantry, have you got... Any Bulgans, if you haven't got any Bulgans, have you got infantry squads which you are able to sacrifice by just being super aggressive with them? And do you have infantry squads or veterans or heavy weapon teams that are sat back on your objective, guarding and providing fire support? Do you have both of those elements? Those are the questions you need to be asking yourself when you're putting your guard list together. And you, and you will need to work out the fine balance that works for you. I can't tell you exactly all oh, 50% of this and 50% of that or 30% and 25% of 5%. I can't tell you that because it, the guard is so, so varied that 
depending on what units you take will depend on how many points you need to put in against each uh, type of battlefield role but you will need to learn and build and play your list but as you're doing that always say to yourself if you come away from that game and you've lost and you go ah, okay i lost that on primary points right i lost that on primary points i haven't got enough aggression and so you will fine tune your list and then you will find that you are not just gun lining anymore but you are able to push forward and be aggressive and likewise if you are being too aggressive and you're losing because you're not killing any of the enemy you need to maybe think about adding a little bit more fire support so there's a couple of golden rules there but there's a couple of things that i've alluded to that we're going to cover in more of these videos but the last thing i would say is the golden rule is do not gun line be on the offensive and if that's the one thing you take away from this video then my job here is done hope you guys have enjoyed this video before we go, I'd just like to say that if you've enjoyed today's content, please consider heading on over to the old Patreon page and chucking a few dollars at the channel. I don't monetize any of my videos. Everything is done as, with as little adverts as possible. There's no tiers, there's no layers, there's no pay me $5 and you'll be lucky enough to chat with me in the Discord or any bollocks like that. It's simply a case of do you have $1, do you have $20? It doesn't matter to me. I'm just really grateful for any support that I can give. All the money that uh, is being generated by the Patreon at the moment goes straight straight back into the channel uh, i'm actually looking i'm not looking i am in the process of building and putting together and renovating a dedicated battle report youtube studio taking the channel to the next level and that is all possible thanks to the amazing and <laughs> frankly generous support of my just fantastic patreon supporters anyway shameless plug done hope you guys enjoy this video Please leave lots of comments. If you've got any other golden rules or hints and tips, if you're a veteran player out there, please put them down in the comment section below. If you're a new player that keeps struggling, let me know what you're struggling with. And I will, if possible, either I will get back to you or one of the fantastic members of this guard community will get back to you and give you some advice. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.